Hello, greetings and welcome to another video from Tyler's Travels. In today's video, I would like to discuss the subject of Thai Buddhism and my personal journey with mindfulness, and how my approach to mindfulness developed while I was living abroad in northern Thailand. If you've seen my previous video, it's clear that living abroad expanded my knowledge of Thai culture and Buddhism. Since I identify as a Buddhist, I was particularly interested in the relationship between Buddhism and Thai culture, and how the two continue to influence each other. In my free time, I occasionally enjoy blogging about my experiences. Here's an excerpt from one of my personal blog posts that I wrote regarding Thai Buddhism. My professor was telling students about the importance of Buddhism here. However, Thai Buddhism differs from all other schools, it is like no other, because it is a mixture of Buddhist philosophies, Hinduism, and animism. Due to the rich cultural history in Thailand, many different belief systems were assimilated together into one. Buddhism doesn't believe in any form of a caste system, yet a sort of social hierarchy exists here due to the influence of Hinduism. When an accident occurs, many Thai people would see this as something they deserve due to past karma. This originates from the Hindu way of thinking and their view on the concept of karma. I said that Thai society believes in animism because they highly respect and sometimes glorify certain animals. The best example of this would be the elephant, which can be seen around many wats, or Buddhist temples, here. The image of the elephant is considered sacred, and is often used as a symbol of royal power throughout Thailand. I wouldn't consider Buddhism to be an organized religion. Despite the vast amount of Buddha images and monks living throughout Thailand, the core philosophy of Buddhism concerns inner experience. There is less of an emphasis on one's beliefs, and a greater emphasis on looking within. This is why mindfulness practice is always a solo activity, because it involves deep inner contemplation. The point is this, once you are able to realize the truths of life for yourself, this discovery will be more significant than if someone had simply told you the answers. In the fabric of Buddhism, lotus flowers hold a deep significance. They represent purity of the body, speech, and mind, since they grow elegantly above muddy waters. Lotus flowers can be seen outside temples and in many places throughout Thailand. While living in Chiang Mai, I was enrolled in courses taught at Chiang Mai University. These courses were taught in English, and each subject was of great interest to me. A majority of the courses were centered around Thai culture and society. Many of them highlighted significant connections between mindfulness meditation and the Thai upbringing. One of the courses I took in Thailand was called Mindfulness and Mindfulness-Based Intervention Therapy. This is a very thought-provoking class for me. The main assignment for this class involved consistently writing in a mindfulness journal. For this video, I would love to highlight some sections of my journal which contributed to my mindfulness path. Today, I took a few moments to contemplate my own journey with mindfulness. If mindfulness means being totally present in the moment and having an empty mind, then I feel as though I have grown closer to achieving this. Each day, I feel as though my thoughts have less power over me. Examining this experience on a deeper level, I notice that it feels almost like a feeling of freedom. But freedom from what? If I consider thoughts to be things, then I'd say I felt free from the constant need to have endless thoughts buzzing around in my mind. Overall, practicing mindfulness has taught me that inner peace can be gained simply through not clinging to one's thoughts. If you think about it, thoughts cannot be stopped entirely unless you are unconscious or dead. Therefore, I believe that mindfulness teaches one how to let go of their own thoughts. I find mindfulness to be especially useful for people who cannot stop thinking all the time, or feel a strong desire to control everything around them. There are many studies which suggest having a healthy mind leads to a more healthy body, and vice versa. Mind and body are interconnected, and once one practices mindfulness, this truth becomes clear. This was a realization I reached through my own practice. After an intense workout in the afternoon, I returned to my room to shower and meditate. 
Afterwards, I felt an overwhelming feeling of calmness and clarity. Rather than feeling sleepy, I felt at peace within every inch of my body and mind. I sat down to meditate and had a very positive and deep experience. My complete attention seemed to be focused on the present moment, and this allowed me to easily enter into my meditation practice. The time I spent today in the meditative state brought up the most peaceful feelings I felt in weeks. Afterwards, I felt refreshed. It was almost as though I hit a reset button within my mind, which cleared out all the unproductive thoughts and feelings I had been having. In my own experience, I would say that recognizing the interconnectedness of mind and body has been a meaningful understanding for me. In mindfulness class, we were taught that there are many applications of mindfulness. Practicing mindfulness regularly helps the mind to retain information better. Therefore, learning functions benefit from a consistent practice. I feel like this is particularly helpful for college students like myself, since we are constantly required to memorize new information. Mindfulness also has a positive impact on our habitual responses to stress. When one's mind is calm and fully residing in awareness of the present moment, our fearful reactions to stress begin to dissolve. We no longer perceive these stressful factors as things that constantly weigh us down or take away our energy. Thus, mindfulness can also be understood as a tool for stress reduction. I would now like to move towards the subject of duality. According to the dualist, the mind is comprised of a non-physical substance. For example, a dualist belief could be that our consciousness is spiritual and belongs to the universe consciousness. Our ego withholds this knowledge from us so that it can go on existing and craving for selfish attention. In my mindfulness practice, I have often spent time contemplating this concept. This has granted me the opportunity to begin grasping my own inner wisdom. In conclusion, I would like to end with a quote that I wrote yesterday. It reads, The end of duality marks the beginning of true wisdom. In our mindfulness practice, once we realize the fact that duality is a concept within the mind, we can begin to discover our hidden truths. I think that this wisdom is always available to us and is patiently waiting to be discovered. I'd like to thank all of you so much for watching. See you in the next video.